to Richard Moali. Richard, you're in the house behind you. Richard, you've got a worthy project I'd like you to talk about real quick. Yes, the next five minutes could be really important for Muskegon County and also uh, uh, all of you. For uh, three and a quarter years, I've been uh, doing something that refers to a question the lady had here last week. She said, is anybody doing anything for the World War II veterans? And I thought, well, if, if she only knew. These photographs I put together today are Muskegon County World War II veterans. Each photograph is what I call a tribute to that particular person. His or her information is printed at the bottom, when and where he or she served, what outfit they were in. There are 20 here. If you multiply what you see here by 100, that's how many I've done so far. But I have a long way to go. Muskegon County, including the people who moved here after the war, had 20,000 people who served in World War II. The paper that you have been given, I made sure you got that so that you would have the information. Everything you need to know is right here. I'd just like to ask you a quick question. I myself have 18 relatives who served in World War II. Most of them are gone, only about three are left but they're all included in this project. I'd like to know how many of you, deceased or not, have some World War II person in your background, your relatives, World War II. Okay, they're all eligible if they lived in Muskegon County at some time in their life. Maybe at the time of the war, maybe later, maybe for just a short time. In the first year of doing this project, and it's all free, to, just like it says, I used up all my relatives, all my friends, all my former teachers, all my Sunday school teachers, everybody I ever heard of. For the last two years, I've been searching for your relatives and your friends whom I've never heard of. That's why I'm here tonight, because I think this is a prime audience. This is a group of people who are mature and interested to know more about World War II. So I'd like to have you look around and see if there is a photograph, a photograph of that veteran amongst your friends or family. Whether they went overseas makes no difference. Whether they were uh, living or deceased at this time makes no difference. And by the way, several people raised their hand earlier because you are a World War II veteran. Now, if I haven't gotten around to you, before you leave, talk to me. Now, I don't mean before you leave tonight. I mean before you leave. I think you know what I mean. Get with me. You've got my phone number. You've got my email address. Last thing I want to tell you is what happened today? Today is just a, a microcosm of what I've been doing. I take Sundays off so I can actually relax, but every other day for the last three years, I've been visiting veterans. I've met and talked with 700 of them, but I know there are probably just as many in Muskegon County I haven't met yet. Last Saturday when I was printing up some pictures at Walgreens, I saw an older gentleman with his wife. And I did what I've done hundreds of times. I say, excuse me, are you a World War II veteran? They almost always say yes, because almost everybody at that point went in. I hardly ever miss one. This man said, June 6th, 1944, Omaha Beach. I was lucky today to have scheduled him today. I drove my Model A Ford into his driveway. They never know that's coming. That's a real icebreaker. I sat with him, his wife of 66 years, their daughter and son-in-law, and he told me everything in great detail about bloody Omaha, Omaha Beach. 
He answered all my questions. His wife asked a few. His daughter asked some too. When I was leaving, his wife said, but you didn't talk about the Battle of the Bulge. Well, that's because he can't remember it. But on his discharge paper, it says Ardennes. We know what that means. That's the Battle of the Bulge. He was there through the whole thing. He can't remember it. Well, that's okay, because when I went home, well, his picture will just go to the museum with thousands of others. But when I got home, I spent about a half hour putting together an email message to his daughter. And the 50 to 60 other people in his family, see, he was fruitful and replenished the earth. If one man comes back from World War II alive, look what they do. They produce this huge family. Every person in that family will get this email message. Now, some of them are too young to understand it, but it only took a half hour. Pictures, description of what the uh, Battle of the Bulge was, what it was like to be on Omaha Beach, and pictures of this, this whole story. That message goes out to the whole family, and some of them, it might be 15 years before they understand it. I've sent out hundreds of those. If I had to do it by putting stamps on envelopes and writing, it wouldn't happen. Email is free. So please call me, especially if you know somebody in your family who was killed in World War II. They are just almost 100% forgotten. If you've got a picture, call me. And if you want a card, see me right after the meeting. This, this is a prettier picture of what I've given you. They must have been in the service between Pearl Harbor Day, December 7, 41, and the very last day of 1946. That's the way the government defines the uh, World War II veterans. And they have to be living in Muskegon County at one time in their life. Again, thank you for just another great project, Mr. Morali. We learned last week about David DeYoung's project. Uh, here we have another project. Wonderful answer to that question. What are we doing in Muskegon for our veterans? And clearly this demonstration is very much for our old veterans, our new veterans, and our future veterans. I want to take a minute and really uh, look at the students. We've got about 22 students enrolled in this class right up in the front here. And I thank you guys for taking a chance on this. This is a first time class offering that is an eclectic hybrid class that we are creating sort of weekly as we go along. So A, I really thank you for taking a chance and investing yourself and your education with Muskegon Community College and the Silver Size Museum. So to you guys, I thank. I would like you to help me and join me in thanking the Silver Size Museum and our entire community. Look at this community that's here for us. Let's stand up and thank them, please. We close the night out. I appreciate you standing up. And thank you very much. OK, before you run, the schedule for the rest of the lectures is up here. Next week is England Stands Alone. That'll be Kurt Troutman. And then on January 28th, Hitler's Dilemma. Consolidated Gains or Expanded Opportunities, that's Nick Budimir and myself. Nick is a professor of sociology and a, a specialist on Balkan affairs, and I am going to talk about how people in kilts save democracy. Okay. Which means the Greeks. Okay, so come on and join us. These lectures are free. Here's the schedule. Great, on your way out, there's some things to look at the back here, some wonderful aircraft, and again, just thank you all for attending and helping us learn tonight. Uh, let's give them about 15, we'll meet down the film here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.